Barb Higgins. Good morning and welcome to our live coverage of the General Hospital implosion. I'm Barb Higgins. Our program is set to run for a full hour this morning with the actual implosion set for 9 a.m. We are at the site live. The explosives are set. The surrounding area is clear and the demolition crew is ready to push the button. CFCN has cameras in key locations all around the site and will bring you extensive coverage of the blast with as many angles of the event as we were pretty much allowed. This is an enormous event and many Calgarians want to see and feel the blast in person and you can see there that is just outside the Ukrainian Orthodox Church on the north side of the river. People have gathered all around the site to get their own look at what is going to happen at 9 a.m. this morning. Tony Tai is down at Bridgeland School. Tony, this is a big day. We're about to set a world record. Oh, indeed we are, Barb, and I'll tell you, there's lots and lots of people around here to witness this historic event. I'm looking up at the ridge above me, and, and there are hundreds of people. I haven't seen so many video cameras and tripods in all my life, and everyone is here to see an incredible event. This entire structure, as you can see, the Calgary General Hospital, will come crashing down at 9 o'clock exactly our time this morning. Barb, I'd like to introduce you to someone here who's kind of been spending a little time in this community. His name is Ernie Inglis. And Ernie, if you can just step in here briefly with me. Ernie has been here for uh, 27 years. 27. Tell me about what you're thinking about today. I know the hospital's been closed for a long time, but what about this day? Well, it's going to be weird. It's a landmark. It's been here oh, ever since I was a kid. I was probably born in the darn place. <laughs> and. How is, how is it part of your life? Uh, it has enriched my life. Really? Yeah, for one of the reasons I'm here now is because of that hospital. Right. They took my ulcers out in uh, an emergency situation. I'm still going strong. Excellent. What <laughs> so. are the people in the neighborhood feeling like today? Is it is it a sad day, do you think? Uh, it's sort of a sad day, and yet it's not really a sad day. We're losing some of the uh, heritage here, but we're also losing an awful lot of traffic and commotion and uh, choppers landing in the middle of the night and everything else, but uh, most of the people would like to see something come back in. I guess that's the future is what's on their mind now. That's basically what's on just about everybody's mind. All right. Well, Ernie, thanks very much for helping us out this morning and uh, enjoy your, uh, the rest of the morning. And uh, well, I'm not sure it'll be enjoyable, but... Uh, how was the evacuation center this morning? You were down there, I take it? Yeah, we were down, and uh, they're treating us real well. Oh, great. Good. Well, thanks for coming by. Thanks a lot. Nice to meet you. It was nice meeting you. Don't All right. Me. Ernie Inglis is a resident of Riverside, which is just on the south side of the Calgary General Hospital. Barb, at 9 o'clock this morning, the explosives are set to go off, and what's going to happen is each of the buildings will, in succession, collapse within itself, the smokestack being the last one to fall. It's supposed to take 23 seconds to go. I'm sure that every single person who's lined the ridge up here, the people who are watching over by the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, the ones over on Tom Campbell Hill, and in every single office tower downtown are going to have their camera fingers ready and their video cameras rolling. Okay. I, I think people also uh, have lots of fond memories of the generals, so they're in looking backwards, there's also some sense of uh, sadness as well. Did you think today was really going to come? I know it's here today. The demolition experts are down there. They've got their finger on the trigger right now, so to speak. Yeah. Did you ever really think that this was going to come to this? At one point, I thought there might be some small chance that we could convince the province to change its plans and to uh, keep the general open, maybe um, modify it, make it smaller, uh, reduce its size, perhaps. But um, our pleas fell on deaf ears. So at, I think really when the last election, provincial election was over and uh, they were returned with a renewed mandate, I, I think that was really the point at which the writing was clearly on the wall and there was no turning back. And there's no turning back now. Uh, Barb, as you've heard, there's a lot of people down here today, a lot of people with mixed emotions about the, uh, the general hospital coming down. But then that's going to happen in about, well, under 20 minutes now. So uh, that's about all from down here at the evacuation center. Okay, thanks a lot, Bill. We'll talk to you later in the hour. Well, it's hard to even imagine how much dust an implosion like this will create. If you live near the site, you'd no doubt worry about your home being covered in dust. Here we go, Stu. 
Last night, crews started wrapping nearby homes to protect them from the mess. The heavy fabric will help protect the houses from any debris from the implosion. Yesterday, the blast team visited residents, reassuring them everything will be okay. Jeff Little has that story. The hospital is wired with more than 5,000 pounds of explosives. The work here is done. Crews have shifted their focus, draping over 130,000 square feet of this heavy fabric over homes, businesses, and a nearby senior center. 30, 33 of these heavy metal containers will be used to absorb the shock of the blast, protecting windows and serving as a dust barrier. Here's Bill McFarlane now with a look back. Calgary's first general hospital opened 108 years ago in a small home on the corner of 7th Street and 7th Avenue Southwest. A replica of the so-called cottage hospital sits in Heritage Park. The medical techniques of, of that time were certainly nothing like the sophistication we have today. Like... Care was basic at best in the eight-bed medical facility. Few medicines were available and surgical equipment consisted of a pair of scissors, dressing forceps, a probe, and a bottle of carbolic acid. The dining room doubled as the operating theater, and if by chance there was a patient in this room, he or she was put into the hall for the duration of the surgery. The cottage hospital met the early needs of the frontier community, but not for long. In 1891, Calgary's population had grown to 4,000 people, and overcrowding was a problem in the little hospital, a problem that became a reoccurring theme at the Calgary General. The waiting list was born. To cope with that, construction on a second general hospital began near what is now Stampede Park. The 34-bed sandstone structure rose on 12th Avenue Southeast and opened in 1895. Weeks ran into years for the old building. It became a senior's lodge and in the 70s was torn down. When the third general hospital opened in 1910, boasting 160 beds, it was the most up-to-date facility in Alberta. By 1939, General 3 was too small. Calgary's population had reached 83,000. In 1947, the city decided to spend four and a half million dollars on a new building. The seven-story Calgary General Hospital No. 4 rose around the 1910 structure. In 1959, the old General No. 3 was torn down. The Calgary Herald wrote there was much nostalgia for the old building when it went. Over the next 20 years, more buildings were added like pieces of a gigantic puzzle. It was a, a perplexing and maddening structure. There's no question about it. It, it, one that, it was one that taxed the, the uh, energies and the patience of the people that uh, with, uh, had to work there. This is an explosive demolition crew from Idaho, which has been flown into Calgary to set up the entire implosion here this morning. The fellow in charge is Eric Kelly. He holds a world record for bringing down the biggest building, which is uh, Sears Center in Philadelphia. He is now about to set another world record for the number of buildings coming down at once. To the average viewer, to you and me, it's seven buildings, but to a blast expert, it's 23 structures because the general hospital was built in pieces over the years, and so there's structures inside structures and there is a clear picture of the significance that hospital has in Calgary. Calgary is really built in a valley and so there are hills all around the site and people have taken to the high ground there to try to get the best view. We have a one minute warning at this time so I'm going to turn things over to the fire marshal Sandy McKenzie.
You're looking at the dust cloud. That's all that remains of the Calgary General Hospital. Tony, are you there? Yes, I am, Barb. What are people doing? Well, right now, they're still talking about it. There was an incredible sense of, there was a silence when the, when the explosions started occurring one after the other, people holding their breath. And then the next thing, when that, when everything seemed to stop, and then that tower tilted over ever so slowly and fell, there was a huge cheer from the crowd that it, I think it was a cheer that it did. It worked, it was successful, and people are still buzzing about it now. I heard a couple of people say, replay, replay. So I guess I'll have to watch TV. <laughs> you have to be at home for the replay, Tony, right. and we'll have plenty of those. But I'm watching this on television as people are at home, and I have to ask you, did it, how loud did it sound to you from there? It's Actually, hard to gauge. You know what? It, it was definitely not the rumble of a truck going by, let me tell you that much. You know what it was? It was almost like I used to live in Cranbrook, and when we had lightning storms and thunder, in the, it, it would echo throughout the mountains. That's exactly what this was like. It was like that echo, a, th a, a loud thunder clap, a couple of them in a row, and, and it just echoed throughout the valley. We're looking at the rubble here now, and I'm not even sure there's one building there that looks like it's still standing, and I don't know if that, in fact, is supposed to be there or not. Here's a replay. Here's a replay. There's supposed to one month. It is amazing when you watch it. You can see the cloud. Oh, here's another angle. Let's watch. And you can see the smokestack. It's right beside the Calgary Tower, as some people can identify that landmark. Watch the smokestack. It's the last thing to go. There it goes. We're watching the demolition team, and you know, they do this all the time, and but they still say it's exciting to watch it. And here's another replay. We've got all kinds of angles for you. There's a look at what's left of Calgary's old General Hospital. Tony, what did it feel like to you? Did you, know, you the, feel anything? No, nothing at all. Uh, nothing in terms of a, 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 a tremor or, or anything like that. It was more so the, the sound and uh, just this um, one after another, this boom, boom, boom. And that was, uh, that was all we felt. Was the, it was the sound wave and the, and the shock wave that we felt, but nothing in terms of a rumble. It will be interesting to talk to people because before the implosion, people were very sad, and I was really listening to, see, to hear what people were going to do once the blast occurred, and there were ch cheers. Which, there, there were. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it was more so relief. It worked. I don't think there was, you know, it wasn't a cheer out of, you know, or, you know it was a good job, job well done. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I really think that's what people are sensing today. They're still sitting here. They're still sitting here letting the dust settle to have a look and see what that new view looks like. If you look over my shoulder, I mean, you're seeing a part of Calgary the people in this neighborhood have never seen before because all they saw was the general. Barb? Okay, so that's it. It's the end of an era, Tony. The General Hospital has now been reduced to dust and rubble. When we come back, we'll wrap up this morning's events with more reaction and an update on the dust cloud and how the wind might affect it. We'll be right back after this. Okay, Tony, you're talking about the dust, and uh, really, I just wanted to say that it's just made up of masonry dust and soil, so it was really just going to cause a problem for people with respiratory problems.